Hello everybody, today I'm going to share with you my early 2009 MacBook. This particular MacBook was introduced in January 21st of 2009 and was the second to last of this model to be produced before its discontinuation and introduction of the new unibody white polycarbonate MacBooks. Inside this machine we have an Intel Core 2 Duo running at 2GHz, 4GB of DDR2 RAM, which is the maximum officially supported amount by Apple, although I do believe it can support more than that, a 160GB hard drive, a super drive, and NVIDIA GeForce 9400M graphics with 256 megabytes of dedicated video RAM, running this 13.3 inch 1280 by 800 display. This MacBook has been seen in previous videos, but operating systems and applications have been updated and changed. So we will go ahead and see how well this MacBook holds up in 2016. But first, let's take a look at the ports. Before we take a look at the ports on the back of the machine or on the back of the screen, we will find our light up Apple logo, which is of course off right now as the machine is powered down. Moving our way down the back of the screen, we will eventually find our hinge, and on either side we will find our stereo speakers. Of course in the middle we have our air vents for ventilation of the machine. On the right hand side of the machine the only thing we will find is our super drive. Working our way down the left hand side of the machine, we will find our ports. First we have our MagSafe connector, our Ethernet jack, Mini DVI video out, FireWire 400, two USB 2.0 ports, audio in and audio out, along with a Kensington lock port. On the front of the machine we will find our IR receiver along with our sleep-wake indicator light. And of course, also on the front of the machine, we have our latch. There isn't a button here or anything to worry about as the screen is held shut with magnets. So all you have to do, of course, is put your finger there and it pulls right open with just one hand. On the top of the machine, we will find our microphone, 480p FaceTime camera, and our status light to show when the camera is in operation. As previously seen, the speakers on the back of the machine get their sound forced towards you when the screen is open. Of course we have the speaker on the right side as well. Here we can also find our power button, and in the middle we will find our MacBook logo. Of course in the middle of the machine we will find our full size Apple keyboard, along with our trackpad. This one of course has the button at the bottom, but it does support two finger gestures. On the bottom of the machine we will find our locking mechanism for the battery which can be replaced and here we have our power indicator light on how much the battery is currently charged. Here we can see the Apple 60 watt power adapter that this computer would have came with. You can see down here some information, so the information on the opposite side. We have our extension lead currently connected to the outlet and at the other end of the power cord we will find our MagSafe connector. Here we can see the light is currently orange, meaning that the computer is currently charging. When, of course, it is fully charged, the light turns green. We also have the light on the opposite side of the connector as well, so it doesn't matter what way you put it. And the nice thing about MagSafe is if somebody trips over it, it unplugs itself. It's magnetic. You can just hold it there, and it'll find its way in. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn it on. Here we go. This machine is currently running 10.11.6 El Capitan, and it will not officially support Mac OS Sierra, which I believe will be 10.12 when it comes out in the fall. Although I believe there's already a patch out for that, so it is possible to run Mac OS Sierra on this machine with a patch. Now I'm just going to leave everything the way that um, Apple would like it to be because this isn't really my main machine anyway. So this machine looks like it'll now and forever be stuck at macOS 10.11.6 unless there's another update that makes it 0.7 or 8 or whatever. El Capitan. And I actually really like the operating system. There's nothing wrong with El Capitan works really well on this machine. Takes of course a little while to boot up. It is running from a 
uh, I believe a 40, oh wait, I'm sorry, a 5400 RPM hard drive. So if it had an SSD, it'd be, uh, of course, a lot faster with booting times. But I do notice that once the operating system is booted up, it gets going pretty quick and applications load fast and there is, really isn't any issues with the machine in that regard. So let's go ahead and click on the Apple logo up here. Just gotta think a little bit. Takes a little bit to come up. I believe things are still loading in the background or something. While that is loading, if you take a look up here, we have our Wi-Fi, and that is compatible with all of the wireless securities of today. So there's no problem connecting to any wireless network that is of today. And here we have our information screen. You can see we are running Mac OS El Capitan version 10.11.6 and there you can see all the specs that I mentioned earlier. Go ahead and take a look at the display. You can see the storage here. Now you probably won't have as much uh, space filled up here. I have a lot of random applications on here for whatever you might need it for. Um, so if you only had you know documents and you do use this computer for college I believe you'll have enough space I mean you're just typing papers and things like that of course you can see the memory as mentioned previously this is the uh, officially supported uh, amount and I just like to stick with that that's fine I don't need to spend more for it anyway like I said this isn't my main machine but it definitely helps out as in previous videos where I believe it had two gigs or something the four gigs really does help. Of course there's support and service there as well. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. Now being El Capitan, everything on this machine would run just like you would expect in a modern day and age of 2016. Of course we have our finder which you can find all of your files just like a, a Windows Explorer. Launchpad will have your applications and you can of course switch between all of that there. You just click there to get rid of it. Safari, Firefox, and Google Chrome are all up to date. They're all supported. Everything on them works fantastic. Flash is still supported on this machine as it's, well, it's still supported on Windows XP and uh, Snow Leopard as well. So yeah, Flash still works on this machine. And I'm not really going to show you the internet browsers because they would operate just as you would expect. YouTube loads perfectly fine and all websites that require Flash or HTML5 load just fine. There's really no issues there. All the modern web browsers that are supported work perfectly fine. As you can see, we do have a new addition uh, compared to the video from last year of this machine. This machine now has um, Office 2016 on it, which just came out I believe a couple months ago I got it when it came out as my university supplies us with all that kind of stuff. And um, let's see, I can't remember what we all have here. Uh, Office 2016 for Mac. I, I don't know if there's different versions, but we have Excel, OneNote, Outlook, PowerPoint, and Word. Of course you can run older versions such as Office 2011 or Office 2008 are also supported. But most people want to use the most up-to-date software, so let's go ahead and take a look at how fast Microsoft Word loads. If you need to type a paper or whatever you want to use Word for. I do like the 2016 version for Mac because it feels so much more like the Windows version. And I know both versions really well. And uh, apparently I haven't opened this here in a while, so I'll just hit always allow. When you do um, get Office 2016 for Mac, there isn't a code for it anymore. You have to pay monthly or something, and once again, my university takes care of all that kind of stuff, which is really nice of them. And um, But the thing that I just accepted is a key that comes from the monthly fee or whatever. I don't have to pay that. Um, 
but you'll have to accept, or I, I hit um, always allow, and then that um, window will never pop up again. But here it'll tell you some new things with it. You just hit continue. And as you can see, it's um, really similar to um, Office on Windows. And here you can see all kinds of updates, which I thought I already installed, but apparently not. I will install them later. And here you can see with this installer, we also will still get updates for Office 2011 for Mac as well. So we'll close out of this and I'll update that later. Of course, uh, there's all types of templates here, but we'll just do a blank document. Now, previous versions also had the ribbon design, and uh, well, almost all the previous Mac versions had that because, well, we had our bar up here. But this looks so much more familiar to Windows. So if you are familiar with using the Windows version of Ma or, um, I'm sorry, Office, everything is pretty much exactly where it should be. As you can kind of see, they might have moved a couple things around. Of course you can go full screen mode and zoom in a little bit because I always think they make the page way too small. There, now you can actually like see what you're typing but everything is where it should be and it just works really well. I'm, the only sad thing about Office 2016 is that it only is supported on I believe El Capitan and up. So any operating system below El Capitan, Yosemite, and Mavericks, it, it's not supported on those operating systems. Anyway, there we saw Word, enough of me rambling about these applications. Let's go ahead and see how Excel loads, the other really common application. As you'll notice, they do jump a lot, which means they're loading, of course. But once they do, um, the, here again, it's going to ask for the license thing. If you open it for the first time, which I just installed a little while back, um, it'll ask for that, as I said before. Just hit Always Allow, and it'll never bother you with that again. And you can just open your your workbook here and there it is just like you would expect it on Windows so we'll get out of that of course we have iTunes which is all the way up to date Minecraft and um, <laughs> that, that works just fine as well my cousin's children love to play that and it works just fine they played a little while ago and nothing wrong there if you do like enjoying playing Minecraft uh, I believe Skype is up to date as well, so there's no problems there. All of these applications pretty much are up to date, and nothing's really out of date other than Office 2008. That's the only thing that I believe isn't really getting support anymore. But it functions just like a Mac that you would go and look at at Best Buy or the Apple Store of today. It has the same exact operating system, but of course, when Mac OS Sierra comes out in the fall, that'll be a different story. The machines in the store will, of course, have a different operating system, but this computer functions just fine. There's absolutely no issues with it. If I had to use it for my daily driver, which I did for a little bit in college when my MacBook Pro uh, wasn't working so well, it works just fine. There's I, I really haven't had any problems with this machine um, for compatibility issues or anything of that nature. So if you're looking for a MacBook, I would recommend this one. It was one of the first MacBooks of this design to have its own dedicated graphics card, which is pretty unique. All the other ones before that had Intel integrated graphics, I do believe. So there's better graphics here as well. So let's go ahead and shut it down because basically everything works just fine. Not, uh, nothing wrong with anything. It's not like an older Mac where things are uh, questionable like the power PCs uh, on the internet today. But everything works fine and it shuts down quick as well. So I really hope you enjoyed this review of my MacBook early 2009 in 2016. Also, please comment, rate, and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching.